about physics. I know that kind of makes people cringe a little bit. But let's talk about physics and then how that relates to the foot and the body. And then we'll talk about where potential leaks um, are going to be. We've got a treadmill here. This is awesome. We can do um, a little stuff. And we'll spend 45 minutes to an hour together to kind of um, work at it. So um, everybody remembers physics, at least the class how somewhere spell it. in school. Yeah, spell it, or right? just, just how to spell it, something like that. So, well, right, right. <laughs> well, well, if we want to define power... Okay, power is work. Could you write a little bit bigger, please? I could. <laughs> Here. So if I wanted to find power, power equals work divided by time, right? So how much work you get done and how time. And work, we remember from physics, equals force times um, displacement or distance, right? So what we want to talk about is we're going to have a, a change in power we have to have a change in force or distance or, or displacement of that force. Force, where does force come from in our bodies? Right. These are, you're going to be tested, don't worry. <laughs> largely, largely the muscular system, right? So we think of muscles, right? And then where is force going to be dissipated? Into the shoe, right? Okay, and the distance or displacement, what... What's going to determine how far or how much um, that force affects everything else, right? The joints. So if we think about muscles and joints, that's great because that's what we're all here for. And that's where all your power leaks can potentially occur. It's the shoe or it's you, right? It's one, one or the other. It's the beauty of running. We don't get to use the excuse of our bike or our equipment, right? right? right. It's, it's the shoe or it's you. And looking around here, these guys got a lot of really nice shoes. So it, it might be us. Let's talk a little bit about the foot and some of the mechanical stuff. And John will talk a little bit about it as well. I'll leave our microphone right in the middle there. Hopefully our sound quality is, uh, is halfway decent. So we want to look at the whole kinetic chain. What we mean by the kinetic chain is everything from the ground up. Okay, so where I, we interact with the ground okay, is going to be real important. That's where a shoe is going to come in. Okay, and then we have the whole force system that's going to drive that. And it, part of that, we have our foot, okay? we have our ankle, we have our knee, we have our hip, and we have our core. So potentially, if we're having an issue or we're not getting enough power, we have to have a, a, a loss of power or a loss of something in one of those areas. So we can start down in the foot a little bit. Down in the foot, we can have issues, we said, with muscles, right? Well, gosh, there's a whole bunch of muscles in the foot that hold the foot up and create an arch out of the foot. We have three um, main arches that we think about in the foot. We have an arch on the inside, on the outside, and then across the middle. And then we have three points of contact with the ground, our heel, the base of our big, our little toe, and the base of our big toe. And when those three points are in contact with the ground, we call that the foot tripod. And if you come to our office, some people will definitely tell you, we talk a lot about the foot tripod because it's very, very important. This is our base. And anything that goes down there is going to affect everything above it. So down in our foot, we have muscles, which are going to control the motions of these things, some of which are in the foot, some of which are in the lower leg, and we have the joints. Most important joint in our foot is the big toe joint. Okay, And that's the, that's the joint that when I'm moving, right, and I bring my foot up when I'm running, that enables me to be able to bring that leg forward. If I don't have enough backwards movement of my big toe joint, that's going to spell big problems for me when I want to go forward. The next important joint um, in the foot is going to be the ankle joint, okay? And we can think of this f part of the foot, you know, because it's kind of where the foot joins the lower leg. But on my ankle joint, I need to have adequate motion so that I can rock forward and backward, okay? We call that ankle rocker. And if we don't have enough movement, like if I can only get to here and I can't go any further forward, how am I going to move my body forward? Well, I can throw my weight forward on my foot, I can collapse through my foot, but I have to do something to be able to get forward. So the ankle is going to be the next link in the chain. Moving up from the ankle, we have the knee. I'm going to leave the knee out of it because the knee rarely is an area for power leaks unless, of course, the knee's going too much to the inside. But if it's going too much to the inside, is it going to do that on its own? No, it's going to do that because of something that happening the foot is below. doing, something that's happening below that. So the knee is like a hinge, right? We, we can think of that because your knee doesn't twist very well. We find that because you have a lot of ACL injuries here in the county, right? <laughs> All right. So we know it doesn't twist very well. The knee is a hinge but the hinge is between basically two ball and sockets, your hip joint and your ankle joint. So the knee is just sort of the, uh, the resultant, what, what comes out between the two. So if I have a problem with the ankle or the hip, it'll usually show up in the knee a lot of times. And then the next link 
is going to be the hip. And the hip, we need to make sure that, one, we have enough flexion, but you only need about 60 degrees of flexion to be able to run normally. But we also need extension. Our hip needs to be able to go backwards. And I would encourage you to look at some of the runners, watch things on YouTube and stuff like that. A lot of people's hips don't go backwards far enough. They stop at neutral. Okay, and if we don't get enough extension, guess what? We're not using our butt muscle, one of our biggest assets, literally, right? So if we can't use that, then we're forced to use what to extend our leg? Our lower back muscle and our tight hamstrings. And what are the two hugest complaints a lot of times of runners, besides knee pain, right? Hamstring tightness, lower back tightness, lower back pain. So we need to think about all these potential areas for leaks. And we'll talk a little bit about...